part, we're going to talk about Disney selling off Fox Next to Scopely and what it means to you. A lot of people have been messaging me and asking me if I've had a good experience to Fox Next. A lot of people are saying, is uh, Scopely a good company? What's going to happen to the game? Is the game going to become more uh, pay to play? Is things going to change drastically? And we're going to talk about that in this video. We're going to kind of go over the history and what it means to you. And I don't think it's going to be as bad as what a lot of people are saying on the Reddit forums. But we'll talk about it. We're also going to briefly talk about it at the end of the video. Uh, in yesterday's video, we talked about instant upgrade, putting the T4 on Shuri on her special ability for U7. I'm currently no longer recommending that based on some information that that I received after the video. So we'll talk about that towards the end. First things first, let's talk about uh, what's happening. Disney to sell Fox video game division to Scopely. And who is Scopely? And I'm familiar with Scopely. I've actually played three of their games. Uh, they're a company based out of Culver City, which happens to be directly next door to where Fox Next is currently located in uh, Playa del Rey. I mean, like stones throw away. It's it's basically almost the same town. And I, I do think that's a good thing. They probably, a lot of people there know each other, but uh, Scopely has developed a lot of different games. And there's three games that I'm familiar with uh, WWE Champions, which is kind of like a Candy Crush, a match three type game. Uh, they also have a game called uh, Star Trek Fleet Command, which is kind of a game like uh, Mobile Strike. Or, or Game of War, it's kind of a base builder game. And then they also have another game called Looney Tunes Mayhem something, which is basically almost an identical game to that of Marvel Strike Force. It's a hero collector game. Uh, both of these games are loosely based off of uh, Summoner's War and Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So how did we get to where we are today? And I want to say that Fox Next is actually... Uh, been changed hands many a times. Uh, it all starts back with uh, Kabam, and K they were all a part of Kabam. And Net Marvel bought uh, Marvel Contest Champions, and Net Marvel is a South Korean, a uh, very very large conglomerate, makes a lot of different games, including Marvel Future Fight and so on, like many 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 games. And then uh, Fox Neck acquired AfterShock, or what is left of Kabam. So basically. What uh, Net Marvel did not buy from uh, a Kabam, they basically just wanted the Marvel Contest of Champions game. Uh, what, the, what was left over became a company called Aftershock, and then Aftershock was acquired by Fox Next. Now, uh, as you know, or a lot of people know, Disney bought Fox Studios, which basically also included Fox Next, which is the video game division. So currently, uh, Fox Next was owned by Disney, and Disney was very public about not wanting to be in the publication of video games. They've been purging that. So they want to retain the license uh, to, uh, to Marvel and uh, the Marvel franchise, but they don't want to actually uh, develop and distribute the game themselves. So uh, the way it stands right now is Disney is still going to be receiving licensing fees from the game of Marvel Strike Force. And of course, like, you know, when uh, they come out with a new character, in Marvel Strike Force, they have to consult like the Marvel specialists that decide what the characters are going to be like and, you know, with the cinematic universe and all that good stuff. So that's still all withheld under Disney and all the licensing fees still go to Disney. But they're 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 selling the company off to uh, Scopely. And um, Scopely is a similar sized company to Fox Next Studios, maybe a little bit bigger, but it's not a monstrous company like EA or Tencent or even Net Marvel. It's it's kind of a smallish company, and I believe the culture is nearly identical. And and even their proximity of their headquarters, I mean, probably just a couple blocks away. They call it called like a Silicon Beach in that area. It's kind of all of the the video games and uh, developers in the LA area in that area, Culver City, Playa del Rey, so on and so on. There's so many of them, and so. So let's talk about Scopely and their culture. And I just want to say that, yes, I have made videos about three different games and I've played the games briefly. Uh, basically, I just played the games enough uh, to get a feel of the basic mechanics and to make uh, first thought videos. So I don't have like extensive 
uh, playing like late game and and the nature of how free to play friendly it was or how pay to win it was. And I just want to say that here on the Reddit post, most of the people that have played Scopely games are not that thrilled about it. And I and I and the, the, it seems to be the same. Uh, post over and over, and I just want to read that because uh, this is an experience that I haven't had. I don't know, and I just want to, I'll take their word for it. It says, bad, 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 bad news, scope layer criminals and hucksters, and this is the Star Trek fleet command. Every new ship costs $1,000 and completely unfarmable. Not only is it not free-to-play funded, it is pay-to-play. Whales have to fork over $100 bills to just use a character bought for thousands. Now, a couple things. Uh, I do believe this is true because I've, I've seen this message over and over on all three different games that I've played. Uh, someone talks about the Looney Tune games. And uh, the only thing I could say to that is what would be said if the, the tables were flipped? What if Fox Next bought Scopely? What would be being said right now on the Looney Tunes forum? What would be saying said right now on the Star Wars forums? I know what would be saying. They would say Fox Next is uh, criminals and hucksters or whatever that guy said. Everything is super expensive and unfarmable. It's pay to play. Red stars are terrible. I believe that this post right here would be identical if the tables were flipped. I believe that the companies are very similar and like-minded. I think they have the same mentality. I believe that... Uh, the nature of being free to play friendly or pay to win models is very much uh, derived from a computer algorithm. <laughs> it's based off numbers and some people with MBAs and spreadsheets. And I don't think it's necessarily a directive. I believe it's like actually numbers based. And, and that's how things are priced. And like, I hate to say that, but I look at these packs inside of Marvel Strike Force and they're usually terrible. But there must be some computer programming that's determining those prices and it must work for them or else it wouldn't be the way it is. And I believe that uh, Scopely works off of the same thing. So I don't think that's anything different. Now, I do think that this is a best case scenario and it is not going to change much for this game. And I'll give a couple of reasons why I think that. First things first, uh, typically these studios... Uh, like the people that work at Fox Next have all worked together for 10 years. They stay together. It's very tight knit. Uh, they all know each other for long periods of time and nothing changes. And so what I'm expecting to happen with Scopely is that they're going to let Fox Next and Marvel Strike Force do their own thing and stay together because the studio already works. And why not, you know, why, why fix something that's not broken? Just kind of leave it alone. Now, if they take everything over, that wouldn't happen for at least a year and I don't know if much will change. It seems like Scopely has a very similar thought process that Fox Next has. And we're going to talk about something that I believe was more important was about the Niantic seismic game issue uh, with Marvel Strike Force rather than this. And the other thing, too, I believe it's uh, better than... Uh, them being acquired by Electronic Arts and Capital Games or by Netmarble or Tencent. I think that would have been a lot worse than being acquired by a company that's basically in their backyard, similar size, similar business model, almost identical games. I mean, uh, the Looney Tunes game is nearly identical to Marvel Strike Force. So I think it's as good as it can be. Now, as Anybody knows that has gone through a merger, and I have gone through two in my corporate career when I was a financial planner, stockbroker, it was not a good experience. I just want to say mergers are usually not good. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of worries about layoffs, a lot of worries about uh, how things are going to change. And it was mostly uh, a, a, a fear of change and change is bad. And it was very uncomfortable. And I remember not liking it at all. And so I think that is going to happen. But Fox Next has been going through some sort of corporate change as long as I've known them. And we've, we're talking about Kabam, Netmarvel, Aftershock, Fox Next, Disney. Now it is Scopely. Boy, it has changed names a bunch. And my understanding is that these group of people have all been working together for uh, like 10 years and it's probably changed hands several times. So I think this is a normal thing inside of the video game industry. And I don't think anything's going to change for us, the players, at all. I hope I'm 
not wrong about this. I really hope I'm not wrong. I don't think I'm wrong about this at all. I don't think it changed anything. I'm going to continue spinning in the game and continue playing it the way it is. Now, one thing I want to talk about is that there was a largely unnoticed is Niantic acquired Seismic Games, and Seismic Games was a contracted to basically build the core of Marvel Strike Force, and the Niantic Seismic partnership with Foxnex ended uh, sometime last year. I don't know when exactly when, but it directly correlated to when all the patches came out buggy. This is a problem. When when the the seismic Niantic people left and stopped working on Marvel Strike Force. Those were the people that were contracted to actually build the game. It seems like the patches became shit. I mean, that's just what happened. And the way they became, became very buggy and things broke all the time. I don't know if I'm even edit that out because that's exactly how I feel. This was a bigger deal and is a bigger deal than the Scopely stuff, frankly, in my opinion. All right, let's talk about Shuri. Shuri. Instant upgrade. Uh, yesterday we talked about this ability right here where it says upgrade ability to level seven, generate ability energy for one Wakanda ally. And the idea was that uh, this is going to help Shuri and decrease her cooldowns. However, it doesn't work the way that I thought it did. Uh, Wakanda Forever says that whenever Shuri gets defense up, she generates an ability energy for herself. So whether you have it at level six or level seven on a team where she is the only Wakandan, it works exactly the same. There is no benefit to getting this T4 in U7 on a team uh, solely made up of Shuri as the only Wakandan. There's no benefit whatsoever. She gets one energy uh, regardless whether you have that uh, a T4 or not. And I just wanted to uh, make that correction from yesterday. Uh, this is a good T4 if you're gonna put her on a team full of Wakandans, but on a team where she's the only Wakandan, it does not make a difference whatsoever. This ability energy only goes to Wakandan Alley, does not go to herself, and the ability energy that she's getting is from her passive. All right, guys, let me know what you think about the Scopely thing. I'm not worried about it. And let me know if you have any things that uh, I didn't put down in the comment section. I'm sure there's something missed. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.